All right, hello and welcome everyone. Today's video is part of the ongoing effort to expand the public archive, which you can check out at brosime.com. I'm developing the public archive to be an all-in-one, easy-to-use guide for new and returning Warframe players. If you'd like to get early access to the project notes in progress or to provide feedback or new ideas for the public archive, you can become a member on Patreon or additionally subscribe on Twitch. Thanks so much to all of my current subs and patrons for supporting the project. Now let's jump into the video. All right, hello and welcome everyone. So today we are going to be talking about taking down a Kuvalich as a new player. Now, for this guide, this is extremely, extremely new player friendly. I would go so far as to say that this is a poverty build for taking down a Kuvalich because it requires basically things that you as a new player should have anyway long before you meet the requirements for a lich to even be a possibility in your realm so for that we are using neja uh this is the base build on neja uh it is worth noting that both stretch and auger reach can both be easily dropped from this build and you can have you know other strength mods and or duration or or whatever have you uh in those slots Besides that, this is zero forma. Obviously, there are there are two forma in this build, but you need zero in order to put this build together. It is very good. This is going to get you through, honestly, most content in the game. You used your three to survive. We have max efficiency, so you can cast your three a lot, even if you have a low power Xenoric. And Blazing Chakram is a big deal here. The extra 130% damage vulnerability is going to mean we do a lot more damage, and this is very helpful for doing more damage to Liches. Other than that, you know, Firewalker is like fine to have on and CC some dudes and Divine Spears is solid crowd control and an AOE. If you were going to upgrade this, I would add more strength specifically for fighting the Kuva Liches. And also you can, of course, swap out Divine Spears for Roar if you have access to the helmet system with Rhino, which is probably one of the first subsumes you're going to gain access to in that system as Rhino is very easy to farm and the ability he gives is very, very good, especially on Neja because it stacks with Blazing Chakrams. If you want to upgrade, those are some early-ish things you can do if you've been working on Deimos. Weapons-wise. Now, weapons-wise, we are talking absolute, like, nothing builds. This is the regular Vectus. This is zero forma. This is what I exclusively use to take down the Lich. Now, it is important to note, if you are going to use this to take down a Lich, these mods all stay the same these two mods need to be switched to other stuff depending on what your lich is weak to if your lich has no weaknesses by some miracle then you will just use corrosive like this but you should always switch this to the weakness of your lich we will talk about how to check the weaknesses of your lich in a moment after we go through the rest of the weapons other weapons the atomos so this is a one forma build for the atomos i do not use it until the Lich is already dead in the run. Uh, and this is really just for clearing just, you know, general additional enemies in the mission. Uh, it is very, very good. The Atomos is a weapon that I think everyone should have built by Pluto because you have to build a MR5 weapon anyway. And the Atomos meets that requirement and is very, very good. This build can be a little difficult to put together, admittedly. You know, you have to get all the way to like the last uh, area of the void to get Pistol Pestilence. But honestly, even if you're not all the way to the um, the far end of the void yet, ask someone to give you a pistol pestilence. Just, just, just ask. That's like really, that's really the long and the short of it. The rest of these are should be nothing, like super easy for you to get, and uh, you should already have access to them, with the possible exception of creeping bullseye. But this is very worth farming, and you should have been able to do that farm already by that point. It's not difficult, especially if you just have Neja, even with kind of no mods, you're going to be very, very capable uh, of doing that farm. And then we have the Redeemer. So the Redeemer is here, and I don't use it during the run. The Redeemer is another option if you are uncomfortable with aiming down sight on the Vectus. If you don't want to zoom in, if it's disorienting for you, there are people that like you know just have trouble with sniper scopes and it's uncomfortable for them to play that way. The Redeemer is here as a solution for those of you that just have a hard time with snipers and if it's just like you know frustrating or what have you. This is a very basic heavy attack build for the Redeemer. It is super simple. It requires no forma. And the mods, once again, 
pretty easy to get. It's worth noting that the difference between having this max rank sacrificial steel and the rank 8 one you'll likely want to put in if you're new is a very, very small. Like, it'll definitely help if you have a maxed one, but if you don't, I would tell you really to not worry about it. The Redeemer is, however, considerably more difficult to build. And by considerably more difficult, I mean it costs, like, one of the materials for this is a Vasto, and the other one is the Dual Skana. The Dual Skana costs nothing to make, and the other one, the Vasto, costs about the same as a Vectus does in order to craft. So it's not too much, but you do have to build two other weapons to turn them into this one. And whenever you build those two other weapons, you should probably level them to 30 first for the Mastery before you build the Redeemer. So it can be a little bit more of a time investment. And while that stuff is worth it, because you're gonna, probably going to want to increase your MR anyway if you're that early on, um, this is mostly a choice for not getting it done super quickly, but just getting it done in a way that's much more comfortable for you. Definitely a good weapon, just in general. Like, the regular Redeemer is fine on no forma. It does very well. Um, it is worth noting that the Zorus is not particularly good for this fight. The Zorus... Uh, does not react well with the attenuation system that the Liches use, but the multi-pellet shots of the Redeemer works very well to still deal considerable damage to them. So I would not suggest the Zorus for this fight if you have it. But yeah, that's all the super new front, new player-friendly stuff. Um, in terms of companions, I would generally suggest a Vulpa. Uh, so if you don't have a Vulpa, I would highly advise getting one of these from Deimos. It's not particularly difficult. You do not have to have them gilded or anything like that in order for them to be extremely useful. Um, their, you know, effects don't really come into this fight, but they stay alive, and that's kind of the point of them, uh, in terms of the companions. And, yeah, that's pretty much what's up with that. In terms of checking your Lich for their weaknesses. Now, my Lich is dead, obviously, because I'm recording this in, in post of having done this. You can click this button, and it will up show the page for the Lich, which, luckily, gets archived in the codex. So, we can go into here, um, and look at the Lich that I had for this video. This Lich is uh, vulnerable to cold and vulnerable to corrosive. They are resistant to fire and they are heat, rather, and they are immune to slash. So immune to slash doesn't mean they don't take any damage from slash procs, which is worth noting. Um, they will still take damage from procs, but the weaknesses are very major here. You really want to make sure you're on a weakness. If they have an immunity to corrosive and you use the same build that I just showed you on my Vectus, you're going to have a bad time. You need to make sure that you are using one of their weaknesses, ideally, or at the very least, not one of their resistances or immunities, or you're going to do hilariously, hilariously less damage. Also worth noting is this Lich was kind of extra annoying because they have Vault, which allows them to jump all around, uh, and they also additionally had Magnetic Snare, which is a bullet redirection, which is also very annoying for this strategy. So this is probably one of the harder Liches I could have gotten, and worth noting... This is a level five Lich. This is the max level they can get to. So this is as hard as it can possibly be. If you follow the guide that's over on brozyme.com for how to use your Requiems and how to guess and figure out the code to kill them, your Lich won't almost ever get to level five. You'll fight usually a level three one. But I wanted to show it at level five because it's obviously going to be more difficult and new players may have accidentally gotten their Lich to level five and this needs to be a problem solve for them. I had to actually go way out of my way to make sure I got this Lich to level 5 because I figured out what the code was going to be quite early. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's going to be pretty, you know, it's not going to be the cleanest fight in the world. Uh, you definitely can die in this fight, even as Neja, uh, just like if it's just taking, you know, a bunch of time in order to get him down with just the Vectus. The Atamos helps with that a lot. Like I said, though, I don't use it until the Lich is already dead just to show how hard the, the fight can be without it. Um... But yeah, if you die, I mean, you have four lives. Like, plain and simple, you have four lives. You'll stand right back up. You're going to put Warding Halo back on, apply a little bit of Xenoric. I really, really would suggest you have, like, at least level level one of Wellspring. That's going to be really helpful here for just making sure you can always cast your three. But higher levels of it are also going to be great. So yeah, that's kind of the, the preamble here. Uh, enjoy the run. Um, if you don't know how to generate a Lich or anything like that, those guides are on the way, but I wanted to get the final showdown one out of the way so people, you know, can kind of get it. Also, side mention, there is going to be a coming Railjack video for kind of what you want in Railjack and how to get that stuff. That's going to be separate from this. It's more about just your minimum equipped gear because you, you can, of course, just join parties for Railjack, which is what most people are going to want to do anyway. But in the event that you have to solo it or you just want to, you know, do your best and help whenever you're not soloing it, this is what I would suggest 
if you are just on absolute poverty level. Enjoy. <laughs> Worth noting for those watching in the guide, uh, this part of the mission, the Railjack part, if you don't have a decent Railjack, by all means, join someone else and do this in a squad. You should be doing that anyway. If you're going to do this solo, you should have at least a decent Railjack. A halfway decent, like, min mod Railjack is not hard to get. I did so on the free-to-play playthrough. It took, like, a couple hours. Um... And that was with, actually that was with max gear, basically, except for a few mods, which is going to look just like this, but very slightly different. You'll use your main guns more than I do. And that's going to be about it. Fighters are dead. Disable the two ships. Yeah, Seeker Volley is the missile's ability for anyone wondering. Then I'm using the EMP. Uh, and then, uh, I forget, what's the second one called? It's the Barrage. It's very good. Oh, I didn't even need to re-aim here. Shatter Burst. Thank you, right. You basically have like a basic Proxima mission at the beginning of this. It's not hard. It's like slightly higher level. Like I said before, if your Railjack is decent, you'll be a-okay. <laughs> also for anyone not wondering why i'm not like drifting around this and zooping up here super fast my railjack keybinds are messed up and i have not messed with them back but just fly up no big deal <laughs> get into the ship throw your three on you'll also want some like basic xenric even like probably level two is going to be more than enough just some energy regen in general for neja just to sustain you also i'll be killing the lich with the vectus which is super accessible mr1 weapon I may clean up regular enemies with the Atomos, though, which is also a weapon that you should have by the time you're on Pluto in main progression. All right, here he be. So for Neja stuff, you want to use your two on the Lich, and then you basically just want to zoom in and get headshots. But just hitting him at all is going to be nice because you're going to get the uh, multiplier that's going to start building up. And he will jump around a lot because this Lich is very annoying. And where are you going? I think he's ran over here. Yeah. The main thing with the Vectus is you just don't want to miss. Because that will take points off your combo. If you get grabbed, it's not a big deal. Your Neja. Just make sure you use your four and stuff. And throw the three back on every time it breaks. Where is he going? Uh, headshots are going to be really good always. So I would suggest getting them when you can. This Lich is level 5. If you follow the guide appropriately, you will not have a level 5 Lich, and they will probably already be dead for you. Where are you going? Probably already be dead for you at this point. They also will likely not have a Lich that says jumpy. Out of the way. You 
to throw an edges to you while you're zoomed in, which is important. Got grabbed, unfortunate. That doesn't really matter. If you die, it's really not a big deal. You don't like instant fail or anything like that. So like if, if eventually they just burn through your three and you don't have enough healing, just stand back up. You get four revives. It's not a big deal. Where are you? Also, I know it sucks that the Kuvalich and all of his underlings all have the exact same icon to denote where they are. Not really much you can do about it. Almost dead. Where did he go? Where have you jumped off to? Oh, here you are. This giant mess of enemies. Like I said, if you go down, it doesn't matter. Okay, and there he is, and all of his 100 quadrillion lackeys are also here. I didn't want to clear them, just because, like, you might not have the Atomos with one Forma on it, I guess. But normally, it's really not a big problem to just fire the Atomos at them, and then it will make short, short work of them, even on the one Forma build. Then just make sure you get all these guys out of the way so you can actually kill your Lich, Jesus. See the Atomos doing plenty of work there, and then we'll uh, kill our guy. Okay, I'm gonna convert him. Vanquishing him will get you the weapon and ephemera if they have one. Converting them will allow you to trade them and give you an ephemera if they have one. You will not get the weapon when you convert them. All right, then once that's all done, you can just leave. In a squad, you will fight each person's Lich in this mission. Uh, but if they're helping you with this mission, then they'll have no trouble with their Lich. And you can help them, potentially. Enemy After that, just head back to the ship. And then from here, we can just head back. You should go to the dry dock just to be safe, just to make sure nothing bugs out. But you can also just exit from here. And then you recover all the items the Lich stole from you and all that good business. Oh, and we got a Requiem Ultimatum. Those are fairly rare. You'll sometimes get these. You can also get Ools. All the Ools will come from whenever you send the Lich to this mission. These come from actually doing this mission. Yeah. After that, the Lich is dead. Well, or captured. Or they're your friend now. So on and so forth. And then you'll also get the uh, inbox to your ephemera. I already have this ephemera, but you can see I get the ephemera still. There you go. Diff odd dag.